Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and today we're gonna show you how to build these three models using Onshape. Now, these three models come from the website twotalltoby.com slash leaderboard. And if you can model these three models, you can qualify for the upcoming 2023 World Championship of 3D CAD Speed Modeling. So if you wanna know more about that, check out the website twotalltoby.com slash leaderboard, and let's get into it and see how to create these three models. Ow. So here we can see we're at the website, tutaltobi.com slash leaderboard, and we're gonna just scroll down here and take a look at this banner. And it says, speed model these three parts. If we scroll down a little further, we can see all of the people who have already modeled these parts and qualified for the 2023 World Championship of 3D CAD speed modeling. So you've got people from all over the world using all different CAD systems. Very cool stuff, and registration is still open. So if you wanna see the way that they created their models, you can click on any of these links here and watch a video of one of these very speedy people creating their models. And if you wanna take this challenge yourself, you can click this button here that says compete. Now, before you do that, what you wanna do is come up here to where it says June speed model these three parts and just click on this banner. This will open up my IMGUR page where I've got the 2D prints of each of these models. So you can see that for model one, your goal is to model this part and come up with a mass of 0.491 pounds. For model two, 2,004 grams. And for model three, 820 grams. So I'm going to move this over to my second screen to make it a little bit easier to work with. And I'm going to go down to this button that says compete. We can see that this brings up a clock. So here's the clock here, model one, model two, model three. And I'm just gonna take this clock and kind of drag it over to the one side of the screen. This, this clock does need to be visible while you're recording yourself modeling these parts if you wanna qualify for the tournament. So one thing to note about this challenge is that before you actually click start here on the clock, you can go through and practice, practice, practice creating these models. I'm not gonna actually practice here in front of you, but I am gonna just talk about kind of the, the game plan process. And basically what I mean is that whenever you've got a 2D print, you wanna kind of look at the 2D print and come up with a basic game plan. Like this 2D print here, you'll notice that the unit system is in IPS. So we gotta make sure that we change our units and on shape to inches and pounds before we get started. Uh, I think that when I go to create this geometry, I'm probably gonna start by just creating a rectangle here on the top and then extruding that to the depth of 0.75. But there are different ways to approach this challenge. Like a lot of the people that I saw doing the speed run, they created this entire shape, this, this profile, this profile, and this profile all in one sketch, and then just kept reusing that sketch over and over and over again. And that's totally fine. You can use any technique you want. But for me, I think I'm probably gonna start out by creating the sketch here on the top plane. For the second model here, I think what I'll probably do is I'll start out by creating this overall shape as the starting shape of my design. And then I'll start getting into creating some of the remaining features. I think once I have that shape, I'm gonna be in a pretty good spot to kind of finish out this model. One thing about this model that's a little tricky is that most of the walls are using a six millimeter wall thickness, but you can see here that at the base, we're using a 10 millimeter wall thickness. So we're gonna have to come up with some kind of a solution for that challenge. And then when we get into this final part here, we can see that, you know, for me, probably what I'm gonna do is create this shape first so just kind of create this tombstone shape and then extrude it to the 100 millimeters. And then once I've got that extruded to the 100 millimeters, I'll be able to go in and, and kind of hollow this out from this direction. And then I'll be able to add this uh, square extrusion on the end and then the cut extrude for that square extrusion. So that's probably how I'm gonna approach that model. Now that's just my basic game plan. And again, you wanna remember that you can not only come up with a game plan, but you can also actually practice in CAD as many times as you want before you start doing your run. If you're trying to qualify for the tournament. But then when you're ready to actually make your run, you do have to do it all in one continuous recording and you have to make sure that you're showing the clock and showing the correct mass when you get to the end of each model. So now that we've got our game plan, let's get into it here. Let's start the clock and let's create our first document here in Onshape. So I'll call this one 22T07 and I'm going to begin a new sketch here on the top plane. Nope, actually I'm going to go into my options and I'm gonna say I want my workspace units to be inches and pounds. There we go. And now I'm gonna start a new sketch on the top plane and I'm gonna create a rectangle here 
which has a width of six millimeters and a depth of, or six inches, excuse me, and a depth of 1.75. And we're gonna take that and we're gonna extrude it. And so whenever I'm doing the extrude command, I like to take advantage of the tab key. I think it's kind of a quick way to navigate through that menu. And now I'm gonna go to the front plane of my model and begin a sketch. And I'm gonna start out by taking this edge and just converting it. That'll make it a little bit easier for me to select geometry from there. One thing I really like about Onshape is that you can type in basic arithmetic in the auto dimension. So I could type in two minus 0.75 to get this dimension at 1.25. Um, similarly here, I could type in six minus three. Uh, most of these things in, in this, these examples I'm showing you today, you could probably just do in your head, but it's good to know for those situations where you do get into some more complicated arithmetic. So this one here is 0.5. That sketch is nice and black, which means it's fully defined. And I can turn this into an extrusion with a depth of one inch. And I'm going to just keep pressing the tab key until I get down to symmetry. Symmetry is kind of like the mid plane option for extrusions in on shape. And so now I'm going to go back to the front plane and I'm going to once again, begin a sketch. I'm just going to convert this edge again. Uh, I know we, we don't really have to do that in on shape because of imprinting, but I think I'm just going to do it uh, just to kind of make things a little bit easier for me to visualize just kind of on a personal, uh, personal preference type thing. And then I'm going to try to pick up that tangency relationship. There it is. And I'll drag this down to this end point or to match up that end point there. I'll do a quick trim here just to trim off that extra from that converted entity. And we will say that we want this to be at 30 degrees. We want this dimension here to the center of that to be at 2.75. And we want this radius here to be at a uh, radius of 0 0.5. I think I'm just gonna put that circle right in there and do that all in one sketch. Probably in production, I would separate those, but considering this is a speed run, I think I'll just put it right there in the same sketch. So this boss has a width of 0 0.75. And once again, I'm gonna tab down to where it says symmetric so that it is nice and centered. Okay, this model's really coming together quickly. Let's go on to this face here, begin a sketch, and we can orient our view normal two. And I'm gonna create a circle here with a diameter of 0 0.5 and a circle here with a diameter of 0 0.5. Nope, just 0 0.5. <laughs> and then I'm going to put in a smart dimension here to uh, this location at 0 0.75 and a smart dimension to this location at two inches even and we're going to take that sketch and we're going to jump into extrude this time choosing remove and that is going to go through all so there we go almost finished one last feature here to add i'm going to just press the s key and jump into the fill it command i'm going to fill it off this corner and this corner at 0 0.5 inches so this model looks pretty darn good. I think what I'm gonna do is right mouse button down here and say assign material. I do have a tutorial on how to create these custom materials over on the Onshape YouTube channel. So if you wanna learn more about how to create custom materials in Onshape, I'll include a link down in the description as well. But there we go. We can see now that we can go into our mass properties, click on this face, and this part has a mass of 0 0.491, which is correct. It is shown here on the print and you have to make sure that you show that in your recording. So click here when finished model one, let's begin a new model, or we could even just come down here and make a new part studio. So I'll just add a new part studio here. There we go. And once I get into this new part studio, I'm going to make sure that my document units are set back to uh, millimeters. This is where I might've been better off just starting a new document, but go back to millimeters here and I'm gonna go to my top plane and begin a sketch. And so now you can see that I'm going to be creating the geometry for this part, like we talked about from the top view. And I'm going to really be taking advantage of the uh, begin a line, come up, come back, touch that end point, come around with an arc, come down with a line, come back, touch that end point, come around with an arc. This way, all of my lines and arcs just start out tangent, and I don't have to worry about going in and adding those tangent relationships. So hopefully that'll make things a little bit easier for me. Come around here like so. And then for this last one, obviously this one's not gonna be tangent. I'm gonna take this point and this point and press I on my keyboard to make those coincident. I'm gonna select these two lines here and press T on my keyboard to make those tangent. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit of manual dragging to get some of this stuff into place. Let's see how close we are to the correct proportions. This is supposed to have a diameter of 80, so the radius is 40. Ah, I got pretty close on that one, that's good. And we'll make this here a radius of 22. I'm gonna take a quick sip of my drink. Hopefully you don't have to do that during your speed run. Uh, I'm gonna take a uh, diameter or a radius here of 22 as well. I'm gonna say that the angle from, uh, or the, uh, really I'm gonna say that from here to here is vertical. And then from here to here, we're gonna have an angle. Let's just take those two lines and make them 
construction using the Q key. And now let's take this one and press V to make that vertical. And now we can add an angle here between these two. And that angle is going to be 110 degrees. And we're going to put a distance dimension here at 85. Just kind of following these dimensions right from the print. A distance from this center point to this center point of 150. And a radius here of 60 millimeters. And it looks like we're going to have an angle dimension here of 18 degrees. And then, let's see, this is supposed to have an angle dimension of 18 degrees as well. That is not 18. So we're running into a little bit of a hiccup here. Where is the hiccup coming from? Tangent. This is vertical. This is centered. Radius 40. Hmm. I think what in these spots, what I sometimes like to do is just delete the entity. Oh, here we go. There's what it is. Control Z that. This is horizontal. There we go. Okay, so that's not that's not intended to be horizontal to there, and that's what was causing the conflict. All right, excellent. So nice and on shape makes it easy to uh, analyze and identify those types of challenges. Let's bring this up to the total height of 20 for that section, and then let's add a shell command. So here we are in on shape, and we're going to add the uh, the shell command here. Where is it? I can't find it because my screen is too small. So I can just type in here. If, if you ever cannot find a command, just type it in up top here for the command search, and you can launch it right from there. And then we'll say that that's going to be at six millimeters. And then I'm going to use the move face command, move face. And I'm going to choose to move this face up by four millimeters. And that should give me the 10 millimeter distance. I'll just click on this face and click on this face. And then I'll look down here in the lower right corner. And we can see it tells us that those are parallel at 10 millimeters. So that is excellent. That's exactly what we want. And now let's go to the... We can just do this one on the top plane again. So top plane, begin a sketch. Let's get normal two here and let's create a circle which goes right out to uh, this point here. And that is our diameter of 80. And we're gonna extrude that up to a height of 40. There we go. And we can select this face and begin a sketch and we can create a circle here with a diameter of 40. And then Oops, that was supposed to be right here. And then we could also just write in the same sketch, create these other uh, circles. So this is going to have a diameter of 18. And this is going to have a diameter of 18. And let's make sure that those are concentric. I was hoping to... I should have... I made a mistake there. I should have gotten those concentric as I was sketching them. Okay, there we go. And then we are going to extrude so that's going to be a remove which is like a cut and that's going to go through all and we'll hit the green check mark and i think that part is looking pretty good whoops one more feature there i gotta add those fillets so let's add a fillet here and a fillet here and there we go that's gonna have a fillet radius of six millimeters okay so now, once again, we do need to assign the correct material so that we can get the uh, correct weight from this model or the correct mass from this model. So we go down here to our materials, right mouse button, assign material, and this is going to be a material called TTT Plain Carbon Steel, which is a custom material from my library that I created uh, in a tutorial video. Like I said, the link will be down in the description. So now let's take a look at the mass properties of this part. And the mass properties tell us that the mass is 2,004 grams. That is correct. It's also shown on the drawing here. So we have shown the mass correctly here in our recording. Let's click here when finished model two. And let's create one final model. I'll just make a new part studio. So create a new part studio here. And for our final model, we are going to create this part here. We already talked about the game plan a little bit. So let's just jump right into it and try to get it done. So we're going to go here to the top plane, begin a sketch, orient our view, and we're going to create a line that comes across and a line that goes this way. We'll come back and touch the end point. We'll come around with our tangent arc, and then we'll close that arc off. Let's make this line here horizontal, and let's make sure that these two are tangent to one another. And we can take this and this and make them uh, midpoint. This and... There we go. And we're going to make that midpoint. And then we're going to say that we want this to have a radius of 40. And we want the distance from here to 
to the top of that radius. So you just click on the radius itself to get that max dimension. That's going to be 80. And then that whole thing is going to get extruded out to a height of 100. And we're going to make sure that that is symmetric. Okay, excellent. Uh, let's select this face. Actually, you know, we could probably just shell this thing. Let's add the fillets and then we'll just shell it. I'm just kind of looking over the dimensions as I'm going here. So it looks like the dimension on the inside is the radius on the outside minus the shell. So this is uh, 15. And then that radius on the inside is 5. So now let's go to the shell command. And we're going to say we're going to shell by removing these three faces. Uh, nope, not those three faces. Sorry. These... Oh, I shelled the, I filleted the wrong edges. <laughs> Whoops. All right, so this is going to be shelled out to a wall thickness of uh, 15. Well, I got a bunch of stuff wrong here, actually. The uh, the radius, let's edit that, that fillet. That, ra that radius was a total, uh, total mess up. That happens sometimes. The radius is supposed to be 20, and the edges that I was supposed to select are supposed to be this edge and this edge. There we go. That looks a lot better. Okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. And now if I pick this face here, you can see that the radius down in the corner is five. Okay, there we go. So our first extrusion was correct. Our fillets should have been applied on these edges and then the shell is created uh, removing these faces. Cool, all right, that looks good. And now I'm gonna select this face here and uh, begin a sketch, get normal two, and I'm just gonna add that hole. So let's get that center point, there we go. And that hole is gonna use the auto dimension of 30 and we're gonna take that out to a depth of Let's re remove, and we'll say that's going to go through all, and we'll hit the green check mark, and there we go. And now our final set of features here, I'm going to select this face, begin a sketch, uh, create a rectangle here with a distance of 50 by 50. And then uh, OnShape does offer a very nice thin feature extrusion option. So we can do a thin feature here, and we can extrude this with a wall thickness of... What is the wall thickness here? 10? Yep, because it's 30 by 30 on the inside. So the wall thickness is 10. And then this is going to go out to a depth of 60. There we go. And now for our final feature, something kind of cool about OnShape is that we can select a face in OnShape and then jump right into a cut extrude from that face. So we don't have to create a sketch on that face or anything like that. We can just pick the face and then we can do a remove. And that remove is going to go through all. And here you can see from the preview what that's going to look like. So you don't have to actually create a sketch. You can just do it right from a face. Pretty cool, right? All right, so now we're going to go down. We're going to do a right mouse button down here. We're going to say assign material. That material is going to be TTT custom materials. And this is going to be 1060 aluminum. We'll hit the green check mark. And let's go down and measure this part. So we measure the part here and come up with a mass of 820. And 820 is the correct mass for that part as well. And so now I can click here when finished with model three. And I'm going to put in my name here, Too Tall Toby. And then my CAD system is on shape free, totally free, on shape.com slash free. So that lets me finish that uh, the, the first part of the qualification process. You can see here that I was able to enter in those correct masses. I was able to record myself doing it, enter in my name, and then click here if you'd like to participate in the Too Tall Toby Speed Modeling World Championship. And if you click that option, then you're going you're gonna to see that you're going to receive some additional uh, questionnaire about how to participate in the tournament. So what, you can, uh, what, what I can do now is I can choose Submit to Leaderboard. And we're going to see that my time is going to show up on the leaderboard here. So we go back to the leaderboard and we can see that my time is going to show up. Congratulations uh, to Tall Toby. Wow, there's so many people on this leaderboard who are so much faster than me. So here we can see Tall Toby 1338 using Onshape Free. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little tutorial on how to create these three models using Onshape. I've really been enjoying my journey with Onshape. It's a super capable CAD platform and it does everything. It does parts, assemblies, drawings, renderings. Um, you can do uh, sheet metal, surfacing, weldments. You can do finite element analysis. You can do data management. Data management is actually a huge part of it. And uh, I've really been enjoying my journey. And so that's why I like creating this type of content. And let me know if you guys have any questions down below uh, in the comments on this video. If you have any questions, let me know. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And I hope that this will help some people get through that speed modeling qualification challenge. See you, everybody.